Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the ELC Ever 90. It's a tier 8 French premium light tank. It's located on the north spawn of Ruinberg Encounter, and this one is under the command of Red Dog Alpha 1. And we've got a two replay video for you. Well, he's starting off on the north spawn with a 90mm gun, a low power 90mm gun, which means the shell doesn't move quite as fast as it would from some of the other 90mm you see in the game but it's a particularly tiny little vehicle as you can see he's being bullied there by an EBR Hotchkiss because he's so much bigger it's about the size of a Fiat 500 this little tank and if you don't know what a Fiat 500 is think of a French Renault 2CV they're about the same size well this one carries two men the commander, who's also the gunner and the loader, and the driver, who actually just drives the thing. Well, he's got the easy job. It's a tiny, tiny little vehicle, and it does have a rather long reload, 29.37 by the book. And, well, I think the reload that uh, Red Dog Alpha 1's got is about 27 seconds. Now, he's sitting in the center, spotting the enemy tanks in the town centre as well as out in the other field, the other side of the field. This tank is famous for the fact that it has absolutely amazing camo. It's also comically small and um, it, it does actually have nine degrees of gun depression this little thing. Although really the best thing about this tank is not being seen. The art of not being seen because uh, if you don't get seen, then you don't get hit. And, uh, well, we'll see this in the video. Obviously, I'm always reminded of the art of not being seen is part of a, the Monty Python sketch where uh, various people are asked to stand up and they get spotted and shot at. Well, you can see that Red Dog Apple once gone over to the other side of the Central Avenue and he's not been spotted by that FP4202 all the other tanks that are nearby, like that Lynx 6x6 or the uh, Panther over there in the corner. There's also a Challenger nearby. That was in full sight of the avenue, but he didn't see him either. Mainly because the camo quality of this, this little thing is absolutely amazing. Various meme videos have actually been made about this uh, particular little vehicle. And on this map as well, on the Ruinberg map, in the Encounter Battles, uh, Steve Walsh of Honest Gaming once famously actually got a Colin Banoff's medal by capping in the center of the map behind a twig. I mean, honestly, it was a twig. It, it wasn't a bush like this. It was a twig. And the enemy just couldn't see him. And so they capped out in full sight of the enemy. Well, the enemy couldn't see them, but they were there. And they could see the enemy moving about and of course as soon as the battle had been won and they capped out he then shot his teammate and uh, incurred a collar ban off for capping out all alone uh, in the cap and uh, also turned blue now he's still unspotted but he's about to get spotted because he suddenly decided to break cover he's going after that panther a short distance away 220 alpha from the gun locks on oh and he ran into the wall he gets two rounds in and he gets the kill shot as well but he's slowed down now and that means the enemy RP is going to be after, after him in a second and there you go <laughs> yeah if you get spotted in one of these and you slow down then the enemy RT will all over you Okay, 27.87 seconds is his reload time. But now that he's back in the bush area, I don't think the enemy tanks can see him anymore. Oh, and he managed to break cover just there, just as his teammate killed the FP4202. Now he's going hunting after the remaining enemy tanks. There's still seven of them out there. And I think he's just found another one, the Lorraine 40 ton. He's spotting for that one. That's a huge amount of spotting assist. And he's now found the GW Panther, the tier seven German SPG, and he's after him. 
Well, he looked on. The first shot didn't do anything, and he did get stunned, but he didn't get hit. And there goes the GW Panther, taken out by the uh, EBR Hotchkiss, the one that bullied him earlier in the game. Now, he's still got one shell left, and he's aiming at that T25AT, but he pulls back into cover. It might be a good idea for him to pop the reload. He has. Good. Okay, that's a good idea. Whenever you get uh, below two shells in this uh, little light tank, you really ought to pop the reload. If you can't fire that shell straight away, uh, then get three shells in, because at least then you can do some serious damage. Not all of the shells on this tank will penetrate. It's, it's actually got fairly low penetration. You can see here... 90 millimeter with 220 alpha, but only 175 millimeters of pen. Now, you get some tier 8 tanks with much more pen with 90 millimeter guns. And the reason it doesn't have much pen, of course, is because it's a low power 90 millimeter gun. And that's mainly down to the fact that it's not a very big tank. It doesn't have much weight or armor, and it can't take the recoil of the 90 millimeter if it was using the full power one. Well, he's locked on to the t 25 T, but he did slow down. But he should be able to get around in. He gets one. That guy's turning towards him. Oh, he gets the kill shot in before the t 25 T can do anything. But he's now only got one shell left, so he's popping the reload. There's um, one of these at the... Um, the Museum de Blind in Samur, France, the French Tank Museum. They kept some of the versions of this particular tank. ELC means Engine Leger de Combat. It's a little light tank. tank. That's basically what it means light camp combat vehicle. Okay, M12 locks on. One shot takes him out. They made 10 pilot vehicles of this uh, tank, and some they put a 30mm cannon. Others, they put 120mm recoilless rifles, and there's also one which actually has missiles. But they haven't put any of those in the game, which is a pity, really, because it would be quite fun driving around with one of these with a 30mm cannon, or even a 120mm recoilless rifle. You get one shot on the enemy, and then you have to reload. Oh, it gets one round into the 45, and another one. Okay, now he has to do a rather long drive round to get the uh, ammo back into the mag. And in the meantime, our teammates are actually capping. Well, he's done his circuit and he's almost loaded. He's coming up on the 45 TP, who's now running away. Come back, we've got 90 millimeter shells for you. They've got your name on them. Oh, tried to kill him, but didn't get that shot in. Fires it an auto aim. And gets two shells in, but the target's still not dead. Again, he has to drive around and try and reload whilst the enemy's firing at him. It appears the 45 TP is not even bothering to try and fire back at him. It's the sort of tank, actually, would be quite fun to play or actually to use in other battles. And one shot is all he needs to take down the 45 TP. And that's the end of this battle. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the first class tanker for Red Dog Alpha 1 in the ELC Ever 90 or Steve 90. If you are a follower of Honest Gaming. He managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a fighter badge for getting at least four kills, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, and a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points to his own vehicle. His win eight was particularly high. He was not only actually doing damage, he was spotting as well. 7,708 base uh, win eight. That's a high super income. Let's have a look at the team score and see where he was. Well, he didn't get the highest damage. That actually went to the T28 on the enemy team. Got 2,933. The second highest damage was the Wizzy 111-1 FT on his team with 2,775. The third highest damage was the Super Persian with 2,346. And just 12 hit points below him 
was Red Dog Alpha 1 with 2,334. Okay, when it came to kills, he was the top scorer alongside the Wizzy 111 FT. Both got four kills each. Three kills went to the T28 and two kills went to the Alpine Tiger, the T25 AT that he took out and the Super Hellcat on his own team. And when it came to base XP, he scored the top one on that one. So top in two columns. 1,202 went to Red Dog Alpha 1, and he's the only player to get over 1,000 base in that game. 980 went to the Wizzy 111 1 FT, and 913 went to the Super Pershing. He fired 14 rounds in the game. 13 of them hit the target, but only 12 actually penetrated. Uh, but he did fire standard ammo. He wasn't firing premium. A lot of people do fire premium rounds with the ELC. And uh, they don't need to because they can penetrate with standard rounds. But you do, just do need to try and aim at something you can penetrate. 2,334 hit points, all of it at close range. Did receive one hit. That was from the Panther when he took that guy out. And it was a penetration, I'm afraid. But he also got hit by the uh, RT. Uh, once when he was actually out in the field after killing the Panther. And the second one when uh, he saw the M12. Um, he fired one round at him um, to take him out. Um, so, yes, uh, or at least to try and take him out and failed. Four enemy vehicles spotted, five enemy vehicles damaged, four killed on 2,160 hit points of spotting assistance. That, I think, is where he got the first class. 101,354 credits for the battle, 50,677 for personal reserves, and 15,000 for completing a mission. That's 167,030 credits altogether. And after repair and ammunition resupply, you can see he didn't fire many rounds, but these rounds don't cost much. He actually ended up with a profit of 161,430 credits for the battle. 1,803 XP, 3,606 for completing a mission, and 180 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 5,589 experience points altogether. So a particularly good round, but... Uh, Nothing spectacular, but he did actually do his job as a light tank to spot the enemy tanks and allow his teammates to get some damage on them, plus doing some damage himself in the process. I think he must have enjoyed that. Anyway, let's have a look at the second battle. The second replay is on the El Halouf map, and it's an encounter battle. Well, in battles like this, the ELC can be invaluable because it's... Very small, very difficult to see, and it can hide in spots uh, where other tanks can't, like in bushes nearby vital spots. And that means that uh, it can see where the enemy is and allow your teammates to get good shots on them. In this instance, you see, it can drive over to the other side of the battlefield. I think, has he been spotted? No, he hasn't. So he's managed to get to a position where he can spot the enemy on the other side of the battlefield and allow his teammates to get some damage on them without them being able to return fire, or at least not until his teammates start shooting. In fact, it looks like none of the enemy light tanks have actually come down to the center of the map. There's one, definitely one. It's a Hawk 30. It's a bit bigger, the Hawk 30. It's not quite as camoed as this one. Enemy tanks have been seen in the northwest corner of the map at the moment. And you'd expect there to be more tanks coming down because obviously uh, it is an encounter map and it's all about the, the, the cap area up in the northwest corner. When he spotted that uh, Scorpion G over there, you see it does encompass most of the uh, map actually, except of course those areas which he can't see because he's so way down in the valley. He could actually move about quite a bit without being spotted because, of course, as you know, light tanks have the same camo on the move as they do when they're stationary. And this thing does have some of the best camo in the game. In fact, I dare say that he can actually hide in some of the bushes that are nearby him. And even if the enemy was to get dangerously close, he wouldn't be spotted. Well... He spotted another enemy tank and he did get spotted by the enemy this time. It was the Progetto who saw him and he's decided to go over this side of the map to see if he can spot the enemy tanks, the Hawk 30. He might be able to deal with that guy. There's the Hawk. 
going to lock on. Well, he locked on, but unfortunately, only one shell and it misses the target. The shell is particularly slow. It's only 760 meters per second, which is pitifully small, but it's not quite as slow as an RT round. And he has actually now got back into the camo, so uh, into cover. And there is an enemy tank just above the ridge line, very close by, or is it? No, it's one of his own actually, just knocking trees down. It's a T-54 first prototype, that was me wrong. He's trying to get at the Hawk 30, who's still in there. Yeah, there he is. He's got three shells now. Oh, first shot fired, hits the ridge line. He will get the second and he gets the kill, but he takes a round in the tracks from the Scorpion G. And well, he was very lucky that it was in the tracks because he would have lost about half his hit points if he'd been struck directly in the main body. Anyway, he popped his repair kit to get moving again quickly. You can see he did take one round through the actual gun barrel. And it would affect his accuracy if he wants to. Oh, watch out. We'll see. And yeah, the, the first prototype felt that one. Char Future Force risking a lot by going up there and staying up there. I had the feeling that if we could squeeze past, then we might be able to cause some problems to that Scorpion G, or the Borsig rather. And they both managed to get through. He's fully loaded now, ready to go. And he's managed to get past the gap. Okay, now he's going to join the T-54 as he's going up the other side. This is a Tier 9 game with Tier 8 tanks in it. So he's got some chance to get some extra XP. Because of course, as you know, you get 10% extra XP for every time you hit a tier nine instead of a tier eight tank. But there's only three tier nines in this game. The three enemy tier nines are a 50 TP, an A phase one, and a chieftain. Oh, and there's, sorry, I've got it wrong. There's an E75 and a standard B, and a 212A as well. So there are actually um, six tier nines. Well, he's being very cheeky to get across here. But the, oh, the ball six seen him. And yeah, that shot came in. And the Scorpion must be gone AFK. Because he's now been wiped out. Oh, what a time to go AFK. Well, that cost him. But he needs to pop the reload. And he has, good. Yeah, don't try and stick there with just one shell. Not with enemy tanks in the vicinity. Because you might come a cropper, especially if the enemy tank has a very high alpha. And that Borsig is very low on hit points. You could take him out with one shot. Okay, he's sneaking past him. The enemy's capping at the moment. We won't worry about that because it is an encounter game. It does take longer. Now, one round would be enough to take out the Borsig. But he's going to have to get close in order to get the damage. And he needs to pop out of nowhere and just whack the guy quickly. There he is. He's not looking at this way. One shot is all it takes. And there's a Progetto just a short distance away. That's the Progetto that spotted him earlier. Now, is he going to do a reset? He might try to do that. Now, he's going to use these bushes to do it. More than likely, one of the enemy tanks is going to be on this side. And those bushes might favour him. No, they're not on this side, which means they must be in the dip. And they've left the cap area, but he did get spotted. He's only got two shells left at the moment. He's using the camo. Oh, takes him around from the standard B. But he's back into camo, I think. Yep, he's back into the bushes. They saw him briefly and managed to get a shell in. Now, can he return the favour? Probably not a wise thing to do just yet, but... Okay, the standard B's not there anymore. He's moved off. 
didn't want to get return fire. There's nobody in the cap this side. But he has to be careful that he doesn't get spotted again. He's lost half his hit points from that shot. Well, not half, but a sizable amount. And here comes the standard B. Now, he's got enough shells to take this guy out. 220 alpha. Oh, no, he hasn't got enough shells. But he does put one in. And teammate actually does some damage. And he gets the kill shot. So he did get him after all. But now he's got no shells. And he needs to skedaddle out of here quickly before the enemy tries to fire. Somebody's gone back into the cap. Our teammates are up on the east side of the map. I don't know what they're really doing over there because they really need to be over by the, near the cap area. I guess they don't know that uh, in counter battles it's all about the cap. But now he's blocking the cap and stopping them from moving anymore. But more than likely it means that they will try and get close and take him out. That T-34-3 was popping up to see if he could get over the edge. And the 2-1-2-A finishes him off. Or was it? No, it was an M-53, M-55. Sorry. <laughs> I got that wrong. I was looking at the enemy table. Well, he got that guy killed by uh, getting him spotted. So he's got some more spotting assists. He's already up to 1,500. Now, he could go into the cap. That will worry the enemy a little because they suddenly realize, oops, we've left the cap un unattended. Their 212A has just been spotted by one of our teammates. But to get at him, we've got to go through an E75 and an A base 1. Now, we might be able to get shots on those guys from distance. No, we can't. Oh, there we can hit the E75. And he's tier 9. Okay, try and shoot him in the, the ass. Yes, one. And he hits him again. But it doesn't pen. And E75 did return fire, but he couldn't get us. And now the 212A is coming to the edge because he wants to try and shoot at, uh, at Red Dog Alpha 1 as well. Oh, and he's gone. The 212A has just been Amorakt, taken out by our Scorpion. And that's pretty good going because that's the uh, tier 8 Scorpion, the un, uh, the plain clothes version. He's trying to creep up on that E75. He is still capping at the moment. There's only one enemy left and he could kill that E75 if he can get close enough. But remember, he's got that terrible penetration, only 175 millimeters. So... He's going to have to pick a spot on the E75 where he knows he can pen. And that the only real place he can pen is the rear of an E75. So he needs to get right up the rear of that E75 and then give him what for. Mr. E75, did you order an enema? There you are. Hello. Now he just needs to get close to him and then sit behind him and sit and pump the rounds in. That's it. Enema time. Oh! Oh no! <laughs> oh, he rammed him to death! He rammed him to death! I have never seen an e ELC Ever 90 ram an E75 to death. I think actually what happened was that uh, when he tried to the E-75 tried to crush Red Dog Alpha 1. Uh, it actually meant that he was damaging uh, the E-75 at the same time. And they both have very low hit points. So even though Red Dog Alpha 1 went down, he picked up a Kamikaze. Because he took out a higher tier opponent by ramming him to death. An incredible feat, if you think about it. He got a first class tanker out of that game and that was a pretty amazing end. I was laughing like mad, but I couldn't, I was trying not to laugh into the microphone. He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points, a kamikaze for taking down a higher tier vehicle by ramming it, as well as a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, just one short of getting a top gun and one third of the enemy team as well as getting a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, 
a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. And he got an Orlix medal as well for taking out two enemy tanks or tank destroyers with a light tank. Uh, had to be at least one tier higher than his own tier. And in that battle, the E75 and the standard B were both tier 9 and he took both of them out. His win 8 from the battle, 4,155, which is Super Unicum standard again. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get a whole lot of damage in this game. The high scorer was the Chieftain on the enemy team. Got a high caliber for 4,724. Second highest damage was the E75 with 3,373. And the third highest damage was Scorpion G on his own team with 3,170. <coughs> Excuse me. Red Dog Gown for one. Managed to get 1,416, which puts him mid-table. But it's still a, a, some feat of achievement to get five kills. And that meant that he was the top scorer in the game when it came to kills. Second highest was the Scorpion. The third highest was the E75. Or joint um, second was the E75. When it came to the Chieftain, he managed to get a high caliber, as you saw. And the Progetto 46 on the enemy team got a level of slaves in that game. When it came to base XP, yep, he's got that one as well. So he's got the top in two columns. Again, 1,146 went to Red Dog Alpha 1. In fact, he's the only player yet again to get over 1,000 base. 982 went to the Scorpion G and 915 went to the Plainclothes Scorpion. He fired 14 rounds, got 12 direct hits on the enemy and nine penetrations. Yeah, it was a rather awkward moment when he fired that round at the E-75, and it was such an acute angle uh, that he couldn't get it through the thin armor, or the thick armor, on the side of the vehicle. And uh, really, so he was uh, in a pickle, because it meant that he had to try and reload. Uh, and you know how long the reload is, 27 seconds. And there was no way he was going to survive against the E-75 over that period of time. So, uh, yes, the best thing he could do was try and uh, make the, the ELC uh, a target that was just too much of a bite to swallow. And I think he actually crashed himself to death underneath the E-75's tracks so that the E-75 went down in the process. And yeah, that's quite an ending. 1,416 hit points of damage, all of it done at close range. He received three hits from the enemy. One was a penetration, two non-penetrations. You saw the penetration shot. That was the, from the standard B. And the two non-penetrations, well, one of those was from the E-75, and the other one, I think, was the standard B uh, when he was trying to come down and kill them. And uh, six enemy vehicles were spotted, five enemy vehicles damaged, five killed, 1,491 hit points of spotting assist. He earned 73,391 credits from that game. And after repair and ammunition resupply, and look at that again, he does. He does it with only standard ammo. 64,151 credits profit because he just didn't use any premium ammo. He managed to do it without 1,723 XP, 172 for this being a premium vehicle, and 861 from personal reserves. Took away 2,757 altogether. What a funny end for that one. I've never seen an ELC be too big of a bite for an E75 to swallow. And effectively, a little vehicle like that crush an E75 to death in the process. That was really some doing. So very well done, Red Dog Alpha 1. If you enjoyed the, those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.